Hello and welcome to today's Curiosity Show. Now if you've ever mucked around with straw, the real stuff, the hollow stems of grass, you'll know that that is really a characteristic of grass. It is hollow. Even giant grass and bamboo is as big as you get. Although some bamboo is much bigger than this, it actually gets about so wide. Well bamboo is very interesting. It's not only hollow, it has little chambers all the way down it. If I split this one open, you can see. I'll pull this one off from the top. Notice that the stem is not only hollow, but at intervals has these little walls. So it divides it into chambers. Those walls go all the way across. Well, those chambers are very useful too. For example, each one can be used as the handle of a tool. In this case, it's a batik pen. It's filled with molten wax and used for drawing designs on fabric before it's dyed. And those little chambers too are useful if you want to make a display cabinet, a very unusual one. This comes from probably South America or Mexico. Open it up and you'll find that those chambers are little rooms. They've got little clay figures inside them, some religious, some decorative. But it's really a mini doll's house that could be folded up and stored. Well, bamboo is probably used for the oldest musical instrument known, the panpipes. I'll give it a go. Well, talking of age, it was also used for the oldest known writing implement, a reed pen. And later in the program, I'll show you how to make one. Now because bamboo is hollow, it makes an excellent pen and it's probably one of the first writing implements ever made, a reed or bamboo pen. You can see why if you look at the end of the stalk. If I tear half of it away, you can see the top half is curved, just like an old-fashioned nib. Of course, you wouldn't want a pen this size unless you're going to write your name all over a wall. You want to go for something the real size. And that means narrow bamboo. Maybe hard to find, so go to a gardening shop and get a packet of bamboo stakes. That'll give you more than enough pens to last a lifetime. Each stake looks like that. You can see it really is a piece of thin but very really hard bamboo. You want really the section between two of these uh, cross walls. There's a cross wall there, down to there. I'm going to work about there in between. Well, what they used to do is to take the pen or the reed that was going to be a pen and shape it with a pen knife. That's where the pen knife got its name. That's a bit dangerous. Wouldn't recommend that. What you can do now is to grind it away, and it's better really because it makes two pens instead of one. Take that middle section there and take a pipe or a round implement. This one's a, a pencil sharpener, but it's about the right sort of curve. And by wrapping a piece of fairly coarse sandpaper around that, you make a good curved grinding surface. And now just work with the stick, really the bamboo, across that and grind it away into a sort of arch or bridge. But it'll be no surprise to learn that I've already done one and it doesn't take terribly long, but you can see that one it's ground almost all the way through. And if you look at that, you can see it really does look like two pens joined tip to tip. If I turn it up, you'll see the hollow that runs down the stem on both sides. That hollow is pretty important. Well, that's almost all the way through. If you take it uh, not very far, you'll get a wide nib. Almost all the way through, you'll get a narrow one. That's about right for me. I'm going to finish off by replacing the coarse sandpaper with fine sandpaper. That means I can finish this off and get a very nice, smooth surface. Well, about now, I'd say my two pens are finished. I have to separate them, and that's where I do use a craft knife or a pen knife. Put them down upside down on a piece of wood like that, and using the blade of the knife, just cut those through like this. They should go with a fairly sharp click. There we go. And now I've got two pens. But they wouldn't write very well like that. They wouldn't hold much ink. So now, once again with the knife, the knife point, slide it into the hollow of one of those pens and split down right through the middle of that nib, like this. And there we go. That's now split, and that hollow there and the split will hold a fair bit more ink. Now that pen is almost finished, but could write a little raggedly. So the last touch you do is to bring in some fine sandpaper and just write your name once. That'll grind the point, and so it's nice and smooth for writing on paper. And that pen should now be finished. Let's see how we go. Bring in the ink, bring in the finished pen, prepare your paper, and without making a splodge, but with a bit of flourish, try writing in old style script. Here goes. You'll notice as you do, that the letters come out thick in one direction and thin in the other. It gives you that lovely old fashioned look. And with a bit of practice, you'll be able to come up with your own reed pen calligraphy. Curiosity